persevering through trials today on Coffee with Conrad. Winning. You know, when you're going through something and your stomach is twisting up in knots and you really, really want things to come out a different way, but it's just not working out the way you want it and you can't figure out why and it's just, you're just going through all this tribulation. You're, on, you're fasting. You're on your knees. You're on the floor. Let me tell you what. I'm going to talk a little bit today about persevering through your trials. So we're going to go to the Bible. Um, you know, I know a lot of you are, we, we all go through some trials. Some of you guys are sending me some, some notes that uh, you have friends that are going through stuff and you're worried about their faith and you're worried about them falling away because of this trial. And this, this is the perfect opportunity for me to talk about this because uh, this is something we need to address. And this really, I don't think it's really um, talked about too much. I mean, but this is a topic, persevering, praising God, praising God, acknowledging Him as Lord, even in the tough times. Now, when your stomach's twisted and you're, you're churning, you know, you're, oh, gosh, Lord, you know, you want things to change someone like my dad uh he had a brain tumor man i pulled every christian trick out of the book i'm like lord i'm fasting lord i'm doing all this stuff you know i'm on my knees i am doing stuff i'm you know and he died anyway so the thing is after that during that whole time god has has been on the throne the whole time so now that's a tough situation you know, that is a tough situation. There are people in, you know, in other countries in the world right now which are being flat out tried for their faith, flat out. But there's, some, there's other tests and trials that can try your faith. And I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures. These might not be pleasant, but, you know, it's like a medicine. We need, it, we need to address this. Um, let's go to a scripture here. Um, Revelation 2.23. This is talking about, um, I talk about Jezebel every once in a while, and this is the uh, Jezebel, okay, in the book of Revelation. He, God gives her a space to repent. She doesn't do it, and he beholds, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Now, the reason people don't repent of their deeds is they value the thing that they're sinning on more than God. That's basically it. And God says here, Jesus says here in Revelation 2.23, I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know I am he which searches the reins and the hearts. And I will give unto you every one according to your words. Now, when you're going through this trial, let's say that your stomach is in knots. Think of the Lord trying your reins. What, what he's doing is... You can be in a situation, you know, look at what the Lord allowed Job to go through, right? And he's like, hey, you know, he, basically the Lord had faith in Job. You ever thought of it that way? He's like, you know, Job, he's going to make it. And now we don't understand, and this is another thing, from a human perspective, we don't understand the things of the Lord. So when, when he says, my ways are higher than your ways, um, God has a different perspective than we do. And um, his ways might not make sense to us, but in the in, in when we look back, you know, Joseph in Genesis 50, 20 says, hey, man, the devil meant it for evil, but God meant it for good, you know. Um, he's looking back, and he sees that the trials that he went through 
which he really couldn't do too much about. He was thrown in a pit, sold into slavery. I mean, he had to maintain his integrity during that whole time. Uh, but looking back, you can see, you know, God had a plan here. I don't see this plan while I'm in it. Okay? I do not see it while I'm in it. I don't understand. And that's what makes it a trial. If you knew, if you knew the day, the back of the book, it wouldn't be a test. Right? So also in Jeremiah 17.10... <clears throat> We see that God says the same thing. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So <clears throat> we will be, we will go through trials. And keep in mind, everything is a hierarchy of values. You know, everything like we're supposed to, if you take a legal pad, and you put down my hierarchy of values. We're supposed to have love the Lord thy God, right, first. You know, and then you might want to put uh, the, the definition of joy according to Curtis Petrie is Jesus, others, yourself. I've heard that other places too, but Jesus, others, yourself. That's the hierarchy of values, right? Um, we heard a sermon by Rick this weekend about it tested a little bit of a hierarchy of values part of it. He was talking about service. And <clears throat> in this in this sermon, <clears throat> he was asking people if they were available for Jesus Christ. Now, when you ask someone when they're available for Jesus, what you're doing is you're asking them what their hierarchy of values are. And this one person goes, yes, I'm available. But he knew him, right? See, like God knows us, the pastor knows his people, you know, know those that labor among you. We're supposed to know them, not 30 minutes a week and hang out. We're supposed to know these people. And he said uh, to, the, to the kid, you know, what about, the kid's a baseball player. He'd miss a lot of Sundays for baseball. He says, well, are you going to be able to serve during baseball season when we need you to on Sunday? And then he realized there's a hierarchy of values no, I value baseball more than the Lord. So there you go. So those are those are some things. It's 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 all about a hierarchy of values. Jesus says in Matthew twenty four thirteen. This is a you know everybody loves Matthew twenty four because of the eschatology you know, but uh, Jesus says something here. But he that shall endure to the end shall be saved. You know, we're supposed to keep going. We are supposed to keep going until the end. Don't give up. Uh, Galatians 6, 9 is a scripture. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. If we faint not, we're not supposed to faint. Amen. God bless everyone. This is the Kid Renegade Redeemed with Forever Redeemed Ministries at the number 4, E-V-A, redeemed.com. You are listening to Coffee with Conrad on conradrocks.net. Thank you for visiting conradrocks.net. Conrad Rocks is supported by people just like you. If you've been blessed by Conrad Rocks, please carefully consider giving an offering. You can conveniently do so by using the contribute button on the sidebar at conradrocks.net. Regular contributors get a spot on the Conrad's Comrades page which links back to the blog or social media of your choice. You can also help Conrad Rocks by sharing your favorite posts on Facebook. Thanks again for being a part of Conrad Rocks. Remember, Jesus rules. That is higher than I Now, David, I'm not really sure if you guys know, but David is mentioned more times than even Jesus in the Bible. Isn't that interesting? David, he messed up a few times. And, you know, I, to, I thank God that all these people in the Bible that are revered, you know, we, go, we revere them. Oh, he's the psalmist. Oh, it's King David. That they made mistakes. And uh, because we, we, we sin, we mess up, you know. And then here we, in the Old Testament here, a couple of examples how God dealt with David. 
And David here, you remember he sinned with Bathsheba. Man, they had, she got pregnant. He tried to tr to make it look like it was Uriah the Hittite's baby. I mean, this is just, this is worse than the world turns, man. And then, and then he has Uriah the Hittite carry this note that he's supposed to deliver to the general. I forget the general's name. Uh, and he says, hey, you know, kill this guy. Basically, let him die in the battle. So he didn't even read the note that was ordering his death. That's always bothered me. He carried it for however many days to get, and I'm just like, oh, man, if he did just open the note, <laughs> you know. So anyway, what happens here is uh, they have a child on the way, and David, he besought God for the child in 2 Samuel 12 says so 2 Samuel 12, um, twelve, for thou did it secret, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Now, the thing here is David acknowledged that he had sinned, you know, and just just acknowledging it, he still there's a consequence, you know. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. How be it? Because this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child that is born unto thee shall surely die. Now, see, this is a perspective of God's perspective. We, when we do things in the name of the Lord, it's the name of the Lord that's our most important should be most important to us, not our name. We messed up. We saw the name of the Lord. The, the uh, people blaspheme because we aren't, uh, you know, we aren't, we aren't representing the name of Christ very well, right? A lot of people, oh, you're just a hypocrite, da da da, da. And then they, then they blaspheme the name of the Lord, like, oh, that Christianity is a bunch, you know, it's bogus. There's no power in it, just a bunch of hypocrites. You know, that's what they're saying. And David actually gave occasion to blaspheme the name of the Lord. So Nathan departed into his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David, therefore, I mean, right before this, he said, um, you've given a great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall die. Okay, so he's saying that he shall die. So, and then Nathan departed his house, and the Lord struck the child Uriah's wife, barren to David, and he was very sick. Now, David, you know, he was going to fast and pray, and the, the, the child died anyway. So, when we sin, we need to realize that it's not just us. It's not just us. I'm going to give you another example um, of David. David messed up again, man. In 1 Chronicles 21, 17, that's the scripture that I'm thinking of. Remember, basically, David's numbered Israel. It's a big, long passage. I'm in 1 Chronicles uh, 21. But uh, David wanted to number Israel. It says, basically, Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Now, David has numbered Israel before. I believe it's either before or after. I think it's before. And uh, there's God told him to, though. That's why we need to wait before we do things. We need to wait upon the Lord, right? Like, also, when, when Joshua, you know, he was given specific instructions not to make friends with people that were uh, close by you know, because you're going to conquer them. And then these people pretend to be from afar off, and he makes a league with them. And then uh, they did not seek the counsel of the Lord, and now they're a plague to them, right? So we are, we got to consult the Lord, especially in big things. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And Joab knows, hey, the Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they are, but may, may my Lord the king, are they not all my Lord's servants? Anyway, so... He's saying, hey, you know, you shouldn't really be doing this, but, you know, you're my boss. So anyway, after a while, uh, God gives David a few choices, and one of the choices is to let pestilence fall among the people. And David said unto God, is it not 
I that commanded the people to be numbered, even I, it is that have sinned and done evil indeed. But as for those these sheep, what have they done? I left, left thine hand, I pray, O Lord, my God, be on me in my father's house, but not on thy people, and I should be plagued. So here's another circumstance. David loved his people, and this was happening. This was happening. This could almost go into another lesson here. But my point is, the, the, the other lesson it could be is like, don't sin. Because <laughs> the people underneath you may pay for it. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> um, one of the things that, that we need to understand here is no matter how bad things got in, in David's trials, in his judgments, the Lord was still on the throne. He never turned his back on God. Okay? Now, I'm going to go to this here. Now, I'm going to give you some encouragement, right? Sometimes sometimes things do not go the way you want it. David did not want these people to die. Do you understand that? Isn't it interesting that he... It, it, what if he knew those people were going to die before? Before he decided to number Israel. Satan, when he tempts you, he don't show you the whole thing. Okay, he just goes, oh, well, you need to know how many people you got so you can fight. And that David, of all people, should know that the Lord fights the battles, you know, except the Lord build the house. Those that build the house labor in vain. You've got to trust in the Lord. That's why he hawks the horses so that man, so that God, uh, man doesn't trust in man. He trusts in God. Amen. So Romans 8, 28 this is a relevant scripture. Romans 8, 27, we've been talking about that. And he searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, that's the Spirit. You know, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not we should pray. The Spirit, when, in your, when you're in your belly, that's that part where you know and you're knower. That's your deep down feelings. That's where we say, you know, I have a gut feeling. There's something, basically you're saying there's something in my spirit. There's something in my spirit here. And then he searches the hearts, just like the other two scriptures in, um, was it Jeremiah? And uh, Revelation, Jeremiah 17, 10, and Revelation 2, 23. He searches the hearts. He's checking our hierarchy of values. But the good news is this. And we know all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So I'm going to tell you something. David, even though he had sin, he had sinned. And he was paying all this terrible stuff <laughs> right? He still, it still worked for good. His throne is going to last forever. He never shook his fist at God and said, I'm not serving you anymore. Joseph, now he didn't sin. That's the idea, right? Um, and he went through all this stuff. And on the back end, he goes, you know, this is, this has worked for the good. And we read about Joseph. Can you imagine what if Joseph, now I want you to think about it, this is not the way it turned out. But what would have happened if David shook his fist at God? What would have happened if Joseph would have said, Look, I'm through being a Christian? We probably wouldn't even read about him, right? And I'm going to tell you something. Going through these big trials, if Goliath was a midget, we wouldn't know the story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you go through these big trials... On the other side is something good. Even if you messed up, you're like, you know what? David, just like David, yeah, I messed up. He is just and faithful to forgive and cleanse from all unrighteousness. Amen. Just confess. Agree with God about it. All right, guys, if this has touched you, please consider uh, an offering over there in the sidebar of conradrocks.net. Also, you know, check out check out my blog. Dude, I've got some pretty cool stuff over here. Um, I started the Conrad Rocks News Feed which is pretty cool. Um, it's something I do anyway, you know. I've got 36 plus ones already. Something I do anyway. I'm interested in Christian news, um, stuff that affects Christians. It's pretty cool, so check it out. Conrad Rocks News on the ConradRocks.net page. 
All right, guys. Love you. Thank you for being in my life. Till we meet again, dig deeper, go higher.